Hello everyone! What, are you bored? Then you're lucky I'm here, being so smart, so well read, so knowledgeable, so humble, and so cool. I know a lot of fun games you can play with your friends that will turn an ordinary get together into a legendary night. I'm going to teach you how to play the most fun ones of them all. Time to begin! Let's start with a classic game. It's known as The Hat. There are many versions of this game, but we'll talk about the most fun one. You'll need four or more people to play. First, you split into two teams and each team writes five to ten words on small pieces of paper. You can always write more words, it's up to you. Just remember, the more words you write, the longer the game. All the pieces of paper are folded and thrown into a hat. The ideal is between 30 and 50 words. Then the fun begins. At each turn, one person from each team takes a piece of paper and explains the word to the other teammates. The only rule is that you cannot use words that have the same root. Players have 60 seconds to explain the words. Then it is the other team's turn. And so on until you run out of words in the hat. The team that guesses the most words wins. The game was a hit, but that was only the first round. Once again, all the papers are folded and returned to the hat. In the second round, the teams must also guess each word. But now the person playing cannot speak or make sounds, they can only use gestures. After this round, the number of words guessed right by each team is counted again. The third round is the most difficult. Now you can only use one word to explain the term written on the paper. Obviously, you can't say the word that is written or words with the same root. You think it's impossible? Quite the opposite. You have already heard the same set of words for two rounds and you should have remembered most of them. Consequently, the third round is won by the team with the best memorization skills. The person explaining has to find the perfect word for the team to immediately recall the correct answer. Because of the difficulty of the third round, it is best not to put too many words in the hat at the beginning of the game. You have to strike a balance so that it is not too difficult to remember all the words, but not too easy either. In the end, the team that guessed the most words throughout the three rounds wins. By the way, it is very easy to upgrade this game. For example, you can write only names of actors or cartoon characters. If you like geography, write the names of different cities. Or if biology is your thing, write names of animals. And so on with whatever you can think of. If you find it too complicated, there is a similar game, but much easier, known as charades. This is a very popular game in which participants use gestures, movements, and facial expressions to act out a word, while the other players try to guess it. The person acting out the word is prohibited from speaking or making sounds, using or pointing to objects around them, or pointing to letters or parts of a word. The player who guesses must now show a new word that will be chosen by the person who was acting previously. But it's time to add some spice to our games, don't you think, Tony? This is the cucumber game. First a lead is chosen, and then all the other players stand in a tight circle. Shoulder to shoulder, the player's hands must be behind their backs. The idea is to secretly pass around a cucumber and take a bite out of it whenever possible without the lead player noticing. The leader's task is to guess in whose hands the cucumber is. If they guess right, the player caught takes their place. The game continues until the cucumber is eaten. It's a lot of fun and probably very tasty. We've already eaten, so it's time for bed. Just kidding, we have lots of other fun games. For example, associations. Everyone sits in a circle and someone says a word to the ear of the person sitting next to them. The latter has to say the association that comes to mind to the next person. The second person says a new association to the third person, and so on, until the word comes back to the first player. If the word elephant becomes stripper, the game has been a success. There are no points and no winners. It is a warm-up game for fun. Let's continue. The next game is called Recognize Me. Several people sit in a row. The chosen person must be blindfolded and guess who the seated person is by touch. You can touch different parts of the body, for example, the arm, the legs, or the hair, depending on how far the players are willing to go. The next game you may not know, but it is a lot of fun. It is known as Yes No Puzzle. Basically, it's a detective game. The game leader tells the first part of a story and the others have to guess the ending. To do so, they can ask the leader questions, but only those to which they can answer yes, no, or does not apply. Other words, gestures or hints are forbidden. 
You can make up your own stories or search the internet for short, funny <laughs> stories with an unexpected ending. We will leave a link to a website with stories in five languages in the description under the video. Let's move on. It's time to talk about the famous Jenga. In this game, you build a tower with flat wooden blocks, alternating the stacking direction at each level. Players take turns carefully removing one block at a time and placing it on top of the tower. This must be done very carefully, otherwise the tower will collapse. The player who causes the collapse is the loser. This game is very relaxed and will liven up the evening with your friends. There is nothing to stop you from chatting and commenting on the latest news as you play. The tower just adds to the excitement. The only downside is that you have to buy the game, although it is not very expensive. We have been playing for a while now, but we forgot to get to know each other. So, this next game is going to fix that. It's called Never Have I Ever. You can use any object, such as coins or toothpicks, as the tokens in this game. The idea is very simple. The first contestant says something they have never done in their life, starting with the words, Never Have I Ever. The players who have done what the other person said have to give a token to that player. The turn then passes to the next person. The player with the most tokens in hand at the end of the game wins. If you don't want to reveal too many secrets, there are other ways to get in contact with others. It's a good introduction to the next game, isn't it? After all, the game is called Contact. A player thinks of a word and tells the other players the first letter of that word. For example, if the word is catastrophe, they will say that the first letter is C. The other players must think of a word beginning with that letter and try to explain to the other players what they are thinking of without using that word. If any of the players understand the word in the other person's mind, they shout contact. Then the guesser who explained the word and the player they connected with start counting aloud to five and then say the word that is in their minds. If their words don't match, the players continue to think of and explain new words. If they do match, the lead player says the second letter of their word and the game continues. Only now you have to think of and explain a word with the initial two letters. Next, it will be three letters, then four, then five, and so on until the first player's word is complete. The next game on the list is very fun and extremely clever. It's called The Secret Keeper. A player thinks of a phrase, slogan, or quote that everyone knows. They then name the number of words that make it up. Next, the guessers ask the secret keeper any questions they want. The answer must be a short sentence that must contain one of the words in the original sentence. Analyzing the player's answers, the other participants try to guess the secret. After guessing, the victorious person scores a point, and the next player must think of a new phrase. The game continues until someone reaches a certain number of points and becomes the winner. Finally, we have an old children's game known as Game of Dares. Each player chooses a different object and puts it in a bag. Then, one person is chosen and blindfolded. The lead player pulls out the objects one by one and the blindfolded player chooses what the owner of each object should do. The tasks can be different, from singing a song, dancing, walking an iron, licking a heel, or giving a fish a manicure. The more imaginative, the better. <laughs> Dare to have fun! Let us know in the comments if you've played any of these games before. What were your impressions? Was it fun? Did anything unusual and funny happen during the game? The best stories, as always, will appear in the next episode. See you soon!